we want to find the infinite sum of the geometric sequence if it exists. So because we're summing a sequence, we can also call this a geometric series. The infinite sum will exist if the absolute value of r is less than one. Remember r is the common ratio between successive terms given here. It's also the constant we would multiply by to find each successive term. If we're not able to look at the terms in the series to determine the value of r, again we can use this formula here where r is equal to a sub n divided by a sub n minus one, which means to find r, we can select any term in the sequence and divide by the term before it. In this case, it'll be easiest to select the first two terms, so r is gonna be equal to two divided by five or two-fifths. Notice how this does meet the requirement where the absolute value of r is less than one, and therefore we can find this infinite sum using this formula here. Our infinite sum, s, is gonna be equal to the first term, a sub one, which is five, divided by one minus r, or one minus two-fifths. Well, one is the same as five-fifths. Five-fifths minus two-fifths is equal to three-fifths. So now we have five divided by three-fifths. Let's write this as multiplication. So instead of five, we'll have five over one. Then instead of dividing by three-fifths, we'll multiply by the reciprocal, which would be five-thirds, which means our infinite sum is equal to twenty-five-thirds. So even though this sum is infinite, it is equal to twenty-five-thirds, but notice how each term in the series is getting smaller and smaller, approaching zero, which is the reason why we're able to find this infinite sum of the geometric sequence. Let's take a look at a second example. Again, we're told this is a geometric series, so the first step is to find the value of r to see if it meets the condition where the absolute value of r is less than one. Again, let's go ahead and use the first two terms. So r is gonna be equal to a sub two divided by a sub one, or three divided by negative eight, or negative three-eighths. Well, the absolute value of negative three-eighths is three-eighths, which is less than one, so once again, we can find this infinite sum. The infinite sum is equal to the first term, a sub one, which is negative eight, divided by one minus r, so we'll have one minus negative three-eighths, which will become negative eight divided by one plus three-eighths. Well, one is the same as eight-eighths. Eight-eighths plus three-eighths is eleven-eighths. So you have negative eight divided by eleven-eighths, which is the same as negative eight over one times the reciprocal of eleven-eighths, or eight-elevenths. So the infinite sum is equal to negative sixty-four elevenths. Notice how this infinite sum is negative, and hopefully that makes sense because notice how negative eight, our first term, is the smallest number in the series. Positive three would be the largest value in the series, and therefore the negatives will outweigh the positives, giving us a negative infinite sum. Okay, I hope you found these two examples helpful.